is alif la mim thalik al kitab la rayb fi hudan lil muttaqin alladhina yu'minuna bil ghaib Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the believers as people that believe in the unseen so right away Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does away with this notion that if you don't see it then you can't believe it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is basically telling us as human beings that we come to a place in our faith where we recognize that we are simply incapable we're utterly incapable of understanding everything around us and so once we've come to this conclusion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator and the one who sees all things and the one who's created all things is the one who's informing us about the reality of things, then we come to a satisfaction. And you know, this is really the essence of kibir, the essence of pride. As the Prophet sallallahu you know, in the very famous hadith when he says that um, no one of you would enter paradise even with an atom's worth of pride in his heart. The companions were concerned with that, with that statement because they thought to themselves, well, pride could mean many things. So they said, O Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, does that mean, you know, if a person likes to dress nicely or a person likes to have nice shoes, does that mean that they have kibr, that they have pride? And the Prophet Sallallahu said, no. He said, Al kibr, pride is ghamtun nas wa batarul haq. It's to degrade people, to judge people, or to deny legislation. And in essence, what, the, what, what kabara comes from, what kibir comes from is this idea of making ourselves bigger. So when we say Allahu Akbar, we say Allah is greater than absolutely anything else. When we have kibir, we think that we're greater than we actually are. And so we overestimate ourselves. And when we overestimate ourselves, we naturally underestimate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the crime on the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ma qadaru haqqa qadrihi, that they did not give Allah his due estimation. And Imam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah he comments on that hadith from the Messenger وسلم, and he says that the reason why those two things would guarantee a person hellfire is because those are two rights that solely belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being legislation and judgment. So when you place yourself in a position of denying legislation, you are making yourself a god. And when you place yourself in a position of judging someone else based on the vahar, based on what's apparent of them, you're also placing yourself in a position of god. And so at that point, you have developed a sense of pride where you have made yourself greater than you actually are. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he, when he wrote his letter to, uh, to Kisra, the emperor of Persia, he said to him something, you know, that's that's pretty uh, interesting. He said, Allah." He said, "You know, woe to you! Are you expressing pride with Allah?" وَقَدْ خَرَجْتَ مِنْ مَخْرَجِ الْبَوْلِ مَرَّتَيْنِ When you came out of مخرج الْبَوْلِ, when you came out of the place of urine twice, in essence, who do you think you are? What were you created from? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells us in, uh, tells us this in the Quran. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Qutila al-insanu ma akfara." May man be destroyed. What was he created from in the first place? How ungrateful is he? Min ayi shayin khalaqa. What was he created from? Min nutufa. He was created from a dirty drop of fluid. Khalaqahu faqaddara. Allah created him when he willed, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala proportioned him the way that he willed. Right? So you had no say in your creation, you had no say in the way that you were created. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thumma sabila yassara. He made the path easy for you. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he says that this can be understood in both the physical and the spiritual sense. Physically, he made it easy for you. He facilitated your entrance into this world. So he facilitated your way into this world through the labor. And, and spiritually, he guided you to the straight path. Once he brought you into this world, ثُمَّ أَمَاتَهُ فَأَقْبَرَ When Allah wills, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes him away and Allah puts him back into darkness again. So he goes from the darkness of his mother's womb to the darkness of this earth. In essence, you have no power over yourself. Who do you think you are? Allah even takes us earlier than that. Allah says, هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ شَيْءٌ مِنَ الدَّهْرِ Or هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ حِينٌ مِنَ الدَّهْرِ Has man not come across a time? لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْءٌ مَذْكُورًا When he was nothing to even be recognized. Before you were even that drop of fluid, where were you? Who were you? And so this idea that we can understand everything around us, and if we can't see it and we can't grasp it, with our own human capabilities, then it clearly doesn't exist and it doesn't make sense. And I remember once being at the, uh, at, at the San Diego Zoo with my family, and I'm that type of person that uh, will actually stop and listen to what the zookeepers are saying about the animals, because I find it quite fascinating. And subhanAllah, I remember the last time that I was at the zoo, um, I, was, I was listening to the zookeeper saying that the, the eagle, the bald eagle, actually has four times the vision of a human being. Right, a human being, not any human being, a human being with perfect eyesight. And she said that if you were to hang a newspaper on a field goal post, three football fields away, the eagle could actually read the fine print on that paper. 
Uh, a great white shark can, de can detect a drop of blood in 25 gallons of water, right? They can smell it from three miles away. An elephant can smell water from three miles away. A hummingbird could beat their wings up to 80 times per second. That to us is humanly impossible. How could a hummingbird do such a thing? A flea could jump 200 times its height, which is equivalent to a man jumping over the Empire State Building. A cheetah could go from zero to 60 miles per hour in three seconds. A giraffe can stand within half an hour of its birth. So all of these things essentially show us that we are not as superior of a creation as we think we are. And Imam Sufyan al rahimahullah, had a beautiful reflection on that. Sufyan al he said, the only thing that we actually surpass everything around us in is our ability to properly prostrate, our ability to do sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to put every part of our body in sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in prostration, because that's why Allah created us, that's the purpose He gave to us, and that's what we are superior to the creation around us in doing. So we are limited in our own creation, and obviously, you know, the things around us are, are far more vast than, than we can possibly grasp. You know, you'll hear scientists constantly saying, you know, that there are now this many billion stars that we are sure exist, and this many billion stars. And so, at this point now, scientists have come to the conclusion that there are over 300 billion stars in our galaxy, and perhaps over a trillion planets in our galaxy alone, right? And then you talk about the, the, the galaxies that exist outside of our galaxies and the planets and, and the things that, that are flying around outside of outer space where we can't even see. And scientists say that the, that the, uh, the chance of two galaxies colliding, that's outside of what we can see, the chance of two galaxies colliding, where there are over 100 billion of them, is the same possibility as a fly from Paris and a fly from DC colliding. So, what you should ask next is, what, how vast is that space that contains those hundred billion galaxies that we think exist and we can't even see? And subhanAllah, when you look at the Big Bang Theory and how this all came together, scientists will happily admit that if things were even one trillionth of a second off, none of this happens. None of this around us happens. In fact, not a single star forms. And so, when you look at the creation around us, how vast it is, you know, who could be doing all of this except for a creator, except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And how could we exist when scientifically there are over 200 known parameters that are necessi necessary for a planet to support life? And every single one of them has to be perfectly met. So how could we possibly exist had it not been for a creator that put us here? And so I saw this article, you know, floating around recently that, that science is increasingly actually making the case for a designer, for God. And uh, Dr. John Lennox from Oxford, he said that the more we get to know about our universe, the more the hypothesis that there is a creator gains credibility as the best explanation of why we are here. And so it has to be something, the creator has to be something that is outside of our concept of time, because obviously time is created and time, you know, n there has to be a cause and effect and creation has to be created and so on and so forth. It has to go back to something that is completely free of our notions of time, that is completely free of our notions of cause and effect, that is completely self-existent, and that has a will in order to will the creation to begin in the first place. And that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.